So did you know there was a time when Nintendo developed and published games for other platforms besides their own? I know this sounds pretty crazy, because nowadays, Nintendo understandably likes to keep their first party titles on their own consoles in order to, well, increase sales. Like imagine if you opened the PlayStation Store and saw Breath of the Wild on the front page, like that's just not good for business, especially when your console is underpowered compared to the competition. Well, there was a time when Nintendo obviously were not in the gaming console market. The original Nintendo Entertainment System was first released in Japan in July of 1983, while other consoles such as the Atari 2600 in Intellivision already existed. But we all know that Nintendo has already had its games available in the form of arcade cabinets. I mean, who doesn't know about Donkey Kong? This was really the first game where Mario, Nintendo's flagship franchise and mascot, was born. And while this isn't really a video to dive into the aspects of the game itself, we need to address the elephant in the room. And that is the Atari 2600 port. Like many arcade games back in the early 80s, Donkey Kong was also playable on the Atari 2600. It was released in July of 1981, and like any other arcade port for the Atari, it definitely had its differences. For one, the sprites just look, well, different, to say the least. I mean, just look at Donkey Kong over here, this is hilarious. But I mean, at its core, it's still Donkey Kong. Mario over here has the ability to do whatever Mario could do in the original Donkey Kong. You can run, jump, use a hammer, climb ladders, just standard Donkey Kong stuff. What stands out about this port the most to me is that the sprite work looks so incredibly goofy, and of course it's understandable because this is the freaking Atari 2600, but it's just fun to laugh at, man. But is the port good? I mean, it's definitely playable if that means anything. Of course, there are way better ways to play this game, which is pretty much just any other version of the game, but hey, this is still a cool piece of Nintendo history. In 1982, Donkey Kong Jr. also received a port to the Atari 2600, and I mean, it's pretty much in a similar situation as the original Donkey Kong. It's playable, but that's about it. Alright, so when you think of the first Mario game, you probably think of Super Mario Bros., but that's not really the first Mario game. Mario Bros. is our next point of interest, and it too has an Atari 2600 port. This port is in a very similar situation to Donkey Kong. The sprite work looks really cheap, and it's just not detailed due to the hardware. Along with that, the controls in this game just feel weird. Jumping is pretty nerfed, as if you don't get a long running start, you'll just jump straight upward, but that's really my only complaint. This, at the end of the day, is just an obscure and not really convenient way to play the original Mario Brothers. I mean, it is entirely possible that I just suck at the game, but hey, I think this port is just generally inferior to the Donkey Kong port. Alright, so now before we move on to the good stuff, we must jump ahead to the future and take a look at the Nvidia Shield. We all have seen these quote-unquote mini consoles before, but did you know that Nintendo has ported some of their Wii games to this thing in China? Pretty cool, right? They ported new Super Mario Bros. Wii, Super Mario Galaxy, Twilight Princess, and Super Punch-Out, just to name a few. Now, unfortunately, I really have no way of getting footage of these ports because I don't own a Chinese Nvidia Shield. However, from my understanding, at least most if not all of these games are upscaled to 1080p. Yes, that means there exists an official way to play new Super Mario Bros. Wii in HD without using Dolphin. That's honestly pretty weird to think about. Of course, HD ports of Mario Galaxy and Twilight Princess already exist on the Switch and Wii, respectively, but it's still cool. Also, here's a little bit of trivia, a little fun fact for you. In the Shield Shield port of Mario Galaxy, collecting star bits is actually mapped to the right analog stick. Now, why Nintendo didn't use the right stick for 3D All-Stars is beyond me, but at least we have it here. But that's besides the point. I think it's just cool that there's another way to play Wii games in HD, that's all. But of course, we gotta talk about some of Mario's games on PC. Alright, so let's start off with something a bit familiar. Super Mario Bros. Special is a PC port of the original Super Mario Bros. developed by Hudson Soft. However, this isn't your everyday PC port. This version of the game also has exclusive levels which sound pretty cool on the surface, but unfortunately this game is an absolute nightmare to play. For one, the physics are different from the original NES version, making things uncomfortable and just not fun to play. Also, this version has a weird loading thing where when you go off one screen, it scrolls to the next, kinda similar to Zelda. This, of course, just slows everything down and hinders the experience even more. Overall, this port is pretty bad, but it's an obscure piece of Mario history, so that's neat. Other ports of NES games such as Excite by Antennas also exist, but these versions are much more similar to their NES counterparts, thankfully. Alright, time to get your thinking caps on, because we're about to learn some sh**. Starting with Mario Teaches Typing 1 and 2 for MS-DOS Systems. We've all seen this flying Mario head before, but not many know where it originated from. It may be a disappointment to some that it originated from an education game made for children, but oh well. So as the name implies, Mario teaches you how to type. Who would have guessed? So that's whatever. I don't really need to learn how to type, but it's just really funny looking at this Mario head floating around telling me stuff. The game has you playing through standard 2D Mario levels, but you need to press keys on your keyboard to progress. Also, this was Charles Martinet's first game voicing Mario, which is just kind of funny how this was his first game and not something like Mario 64. Then we have Mario's Time Machine and Mario's Missing, which also saw NES and SNES versions, but since there are also MS-DOS versions, I thought we would go ahead and talk about these games. I think we're all well aware by now that these games just aren't very good. I mean, they're education games that take you through America in world history, I don't think it's very possible for them to be any good at all. So for that reason, I'm not really going to go in depth when it comes to these games in this video, because that, my friends, is for another time. But as far as differences between the console and PC versions go, the gameplay is slightly different, but the story pretty much remains.
remains the same from my understanding. I mean, I don't really think there's much of a story in the first place, so there's not really much room to change. All right, let's end off this video by talking about Nintendo's games on the Philips CDI. So for those of you who are unaware, the Philips CDI was a game console that allowed you to play games from a compact disc. So this allowed Nintendo to put out some pretty cool games using the technology if they wanted to. Yeah, all of these games are pretty terrible. The technical limitations along with short development times cause these games to just be god-awful. Let's start with the three Zelda games that were made for this thing. Two of these games feature the side-scrolling gameplay that was used in Zelda 2, while the other one uses a top-down perspective similar to the original Legend of Zelda on the NES. Something that caught my eye with these games is that they feature animated cinematics with voice acting and all. These are very cheesy, and the voice acting is just, mmm, top tier, but they are so fun to laugh at. They're that terrible. Oh, and you best believe there's some Mario games on this thing. It wouldn't feel right without them. Let's start with Hotel Mario, a true classic. In this game, you would have to close all the doors in the seven hotels that are run by the Koopalings. However, you need to also defeat enemies that randomly open the doors. It's about as dumb as it sounds, and it's not fun to play whatsoever. But there are definitely good aspects of this game, don't get me wrong. Like the cutscenes, for example. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> Nice of the princess to invite us over for a picnic, <laughs> eh, Luigi? I hope she made lots of spaghetti. <laughs> Luigi, look. This voice acting. <laughs> the princess is now a permanent guest at one of my seven Koopa hotels. Oh, no. I dare you to find her if you can. Gotta find the princess. <laughs> and you gotta help us. If you need instructions on how to get through the hotel, check out the enclosed instruction book. <laughs> okay, thanks, Mario. I just, just stop? These are amazing. True works of art. But in all seriousness, this game is exceptionally bad, which shouldn't be a surprise by now. But hey, if you want to see me play this game, then hit that subscribe button because I'll be playing this heaping pile of garbage on stream at 15,000 subscribers. Why do I do this to myself? All right, get your thinking caps on again because we have yet another educational Mario game called Mario Takes America. This game stars Mario as he journeys across the country to become a Hollywood movie star. As Mario, you're also able to drive multiple vehicles like trucks, airplanes, motorbikes, and even helicopters. This sounds pretty badass, right? Well, it's with a heavy heart that I inform you all that this game never saw the light of day. I know, I know, it's a complete shocker that this game never got past the conceptual stages. In fact, the creator of the original pitch went bankrupt right after it was declined. Very interesting coincidence there. But in all seriousness, we should be forever grateful that this game never existed. Super Mario's Wacky Worlds was a cancelled sequel to Super Mario World that was scrapped pretty much due to the poor reception of the Philips CDI. This game was controlled like any Mario game. You can run, jump, and use power-ups. Just pretty standard stuff. They actually took a lot of DNA from Mario World and reused it for this game because the sprite work in the art style is almost in distinguishable, even though it was cancelled, very early prototypes of this game still exist. Neat. Well, there you have it. Turns out that Nintendo hasn't always kept its games exclusive to their consoles. It truly makes you wonder how different things would have been if Nintendo dropped out of the console race as Sega did. But that's gonna end it off for this video, so thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye.